Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to vote in the poll for what character you want to see next, and like and subscribe for better persuasion checks next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building a legendary outlaw, Peter Quill, otherwise known as Star-Lord. Created by Steve Englehart and Steve Gann in 1976, Star-Lord was a tactical genius and space cop. Recreated for the MCU, he's a little different, but just as lovable. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need some interesting moving options from those fancy boots. Next, we'll get some relatively high-tech weaponry. Finally, we'll load up on knickknacks that give our spaceman a playstyle that's truly out of this world. For stats, we're going to be using the standard .5 from the player's handbook. There's nothing wrong with rolling, I'm just not at your house with you. Or am I? Dexterity is number one here. It helps us fire ranged weapons, adds to our armor class, and helps us get some movement options later. Next up, Charisma. We need to be able to dance like the fate of the universe depends on it, which it might. Intelligence after that, there's a difference between Goofy and Stupid, and Star-Lord definitely falls into the Goofy category. He flies spaceships, fixes guns with rockets, he's not an idiot. Constitution with Follow, so he can hang on to an Infinity Stone when needed. Strength after that, he's in great shape, at least until Infinity War. Maybe we could get him a Bowflex or something. Finally, we're dumping Wisdom. Self-control isn't really Peter's thing. Now, I would have gone Azamar or Half-Elf for the race, but by the end of Guardians 2, Peter loses his celestial abilities, and you can't change your race without a reincarnation spell, so we'll just go for Varen Human. Take the Magic Initiate feat for a couple of Bard spells. Minor Illusion is a cantrip that doesn't just create images, but can create sounds as well, or songs if you just want to listen to some tunes. Vicious Mockery is the best cantrip in the game, fun fact. It forces a Wisdom save of 8, plus your Charisma modifier, plus your Proficiency bonus. On failed saves, it deals 1d4 psychic damage and gives the target disadvantage on its next attack roll. For the first level spell, take Featherfall. This slows the fall speed of up to 5 creatures so you don't get hurt while falling. Bump up your charisma and dexterity by 1 with your free points from being a human. Take another free language as a human and persuasion as the skill of choice. For background, go with Urchin. Marvel Cinematic Universe Quill was raised by Ravagers. It gives you stealth and sleight of hand. Both are good for thieving. Speaking of thieving, we'll start off as a rogue, giving us 4 more skills. Take Athletics, Investigation, Deception, and Performance. You also get expertise and two skills of your choice. I'd say sleight of hand and persuasion, though a convincing argument could be made for performance. There's also sneak attack, which lets you add 1d6 to damage when you have advantage on the attack roll, or if you have an ally within 5 feet of the target and don't have disadvantage. You have to use a finesse or a ranged weapon for this. Second level rogues get cunning action, which lets them dash, disengage, or hide as a bonus action. Star-Lord does a lot of dashing and disengaging, so stick to those if you're a purist. Level 3, you get to pick a roguish archetype. We'll go with Thief for a couple of reasons. Number 1, you get second story work, which means that all vertical movement no longer costs more. So you can climb 30 feet with your normal movement, 60 feet if you dash and 90 feet if you double dash with your cunning action. You can also add your dexterity mod to longer jumps. You also have fast hands. This means you can make a sleight of hand check to use an object or disarm a trap as a bonus action. Your sneak attack is also now dealing 2d6 extra damage. One more level of rogue will give us an ability score improvement or a feat. We'll take the inspiring leader feat. This lets you make an inspiring speech to your team and give them temporary hit points equal to your level plus your charisma modifier. Lobera's handbook says this takes 10 minutes, but hopefully your DM just lets you give the bullet points. Now that we have all of Star-Lord's roguish panache accounted for, we can get the gun. The Artificer is a class that hasn't been made official, it's still just Unearthed Arcana. The good news is this means it's free online, you just have to Google it. The first thing you'll get is a specialty and we'll go for Gunsmith. It gives you a Thunder Cannon, it's a special ranged weapon that deals 2d6 piercing damage and takes a bonus action to reload, so you have to choose between reloading and taking a cunning action. It has a normal range of 150 feet and a long range of 500 feet. You're also a Master Smith, giving you proficiency with Smith's tools and the Mending Cantrip which lets you fix small tears or breaks in things instantly. You also get magic item analysis, which lets you use detect magic and identify as rituals, letting you determine where and what a magic item is. At level 2, you get tool expertise. I'm sure Quill would have a joke for that, but I'll just say you have expertise with Smith's tools. You also get a wondrous invention. Goggles of Nike give you dark vision, and they look cool, so I use those. Third level puts some thunder in your thunder cannon with a thundermonger ability. This adds 1d6 thunder damage to your shots. You also get some spells, two first level spell slots, and knowledge of three total spells. Jump triples the target's jump distance for one minute. Long Strider increases your movement by 10 feet for an hour. Alarm lets you set up a warning device on a door. When someone passes through it, you hear a handbell ringing for 10 seconds, either in your head or out loud. The spells get cooler at fourth level as you can attach them to items with infused magic. Take any of your spells that take an action to cast and spend a minute transferring them into an item. This spell can now be stored and activated by a friendly creature with an intelligence of six or higher. The spell has to be activated within eight hours or it's wasted. You can also learn another spell. Cure Wounds functions as a 
a first aid kit, healing 1d8 plus your intelligence modifier. This is a really good spell to infuse, by the way, basically making a little health potion. For your ability score improvement, bump up your dexterity. It increases your AC and your accuracy with your gun and your jump distance. Fifth level artificers get another wondrous invention. The Helm of Comprehending Languages lets you understand any language at will. Peter has a translator implanted in him, so don't worry about not speaking those alien languages. You can also now attune up to four items instead of the standard three with superior attunement. Your Thunder Cannon also now deals 2d6 thunder damage. Sixth level artificers get a Mechanical Servant. It's a beast of challenge rating two or lower that counts as a construct. It has dark vision and immunity to poison, and you can use your reaction to have it attack someone who attacks you with a melee attack. Star-Lord doesn't have this in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, so build your own robot OC. I recommend a Sabertooth Tiger, but you do you. I'm gonna make some weird sh 7th level artificers can use 2nd level spells and learn one more. Magic weapon is a bonus action that adds 1 to damage and attack rolls with a weapon for up to an hour if you don't lose concentration. This means that your thunder cannon's piercing damage won't be lowered by magical resistance, which is nice. Speaking of, it now deals 3d6 thunder damage. 8th level of artificer is an ability score improvement. Cap your dexterity, it's an important ability for you. You also get another spell. Levitate takes an action to cast so it can be infused and lifts the target 20 feet in the first turn. That target can't move without pushing or pulling on a fixed object. They don't want to move, they can make a constitution save to resist the levitation effect. This save is 8 plus your proficiency plus your intelligence modifier. You can move the affected target another 20 feet on your turn. Falling from this height is always gentle, so you can't use it to lift someone 100 feet and then plummet them to their death. This is a great spell to infuse though, helping a party member get some vertical mobility. This might be a reasonable place to end the build, but this is a good example of a build that gets what it needs and keeps improving on those things moving forward. So 9th level gunsmiths can now use Blast Wave, which fires a 15 foot cone in front of the gun. Creatures in the cone make a strength save or get pushed 10 feet backwards and take 2d6 force damage. Or you could fire a normal shot and deal 4d6 extra thunder damage. Your call. 10th level artificers get another wondrous invention. Sending stones function basically as fantasy walkie-talkies, letting you communicate short messages as long as the other stone is on the same plane. You also get another spell. Aid gives up to three targets, five temporary hit points, takes an action to cast so it can be infused, and stacks with your inspiring leader bonus. At the 11th level, you get another spell. See invisibility lets you see invisible things for an hour. Takes an action to cast so it can be infused if you think someone can use it more than you. Your thunder damage also increases to 5d6. Your 12th level is an ability score improvement. Intelligence increases your spell abilities, but Charisma increases your Inspiring Leader bonus, so pick either. I'd go for Charisma, as most of your spells don't really require saves. At the 13th level, you get 3rd level spells. Fly gives you a flying speed of 60 feet per turn. Takes an action to cast so it can be infused, lasts 10 minutes, and requires concentration, so if someone blows up your boots, prepare to fall hard and fast. Thunder damage is also now 66. At the 14th level, you get Piercing Shot, which lets you shoot lightning in a 30-foot line. Any creature in that line makes a deck save or takes 46 lightning damage. For your spell, take Protection from Energy, which grants resistance to a damage type of your choice from Acid, Cold, Fire, Lightning, or Thunder. Takes an action to cast so it can be infused. 15th level artificers get another wondrous invention, and the boots of striding and springing are pretty much perfect for the rocket boots. They remove the penalty from being encumbered, but more importantly, they triple your jump distance and height. You can also attune up to 5 weapons at a time now, and your thunder cannon deals 76 thunder damage. Our capstone is 16th level of artificer, which gives us our last ability score improvement, and will bump up the charisma modifier again for better inspiring speeches. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how good of a build this is. First, the thunder cannon is a fantastic weapon, dealing 96 total damage, and 76 of that is thunder damage, which isn't resisted as commonly as piercing. This is almost as high as a rogue sneak attack without the restrictions of use. Secondly, you're a fantastic team player, boosting HP with inspiring leader and handing out infused spells for buffs, not to mention a plethora of non-combat skills and languages. Finally, you've got great mobility options for exploring and keeping active in combat. As far as downsides go, your main weapon takes a bonus action to reload, which nullifies the greatness of cunning action as you have to choose which you'd like to use. And while infusing spells is great, you're a third-rate caster, on par with an Eldritch Knight and an Arcane Trickster. Like those classes, you get more from the rest of the class, it's just kind of sad to invest 16 levels into a casting class and only have third-level spell slots. Finally, your HP is on the lower end of average, so you want to make sure you stay out of the main fight. But with flying boots and a gun, no one expects you to be tanking. Warm up the team with an awesome plan, jump over people's heads, and blast them with thunder damage. Just try and keep your emotions in check or everyone will blame you for killing half the universe. Thanks for watching, if you liked the video subscribe for more, we'll be doing another MCU character next month and I'd like to give these new kids a chance. Vote for Spider-Man, Black Panther, or Doctor Strange, we'll be back next week with a special surprise, so come back for that.